continue our session here and hear from our world famous, wor uh, world uh, traveled ethnobotanist, New Skin's best friend, Dr. Paul Cox. Wow. Wow, it's so great to be with you. I got to tell you, last Thursday was such a special day to me in New Skin history. You may not realize that, but that was the first time, as far as I'm aware, that we showed you the new signature oils. It's the first day I got to see them in production. So I put that second only to the Los Angeles release of Age Lock, where the distributor force lapsed into cannibalism to get the product. <laughs> So, I want to talk to you a little bit about Epic, just for a few minutes. What I'd really love to do is just take you into my Land Cruiser, which is outside. I'd love to fit you in there. Four and a half, five hours, we'd be up in Jackson Hole, we'd get my canoe, we'd start looking at the ice floating on Lee Lake, I'd tell you the stories. So, you're just going to have to come up and see me, and you have an open invitation to see me anytime, any place. And I want to tell you this, if I had a sandwich, I'd give you half of it, okay? And I will. And some of you know, you've shown up my doorstep in my laboratory and you get half my, there's half a candy bar. Okay, thank you. So, epic. My story. Who's that good looking man there? <laughs> this is my little family. I was so lucky. I've, I've just had such a lucky life. Uh, after I got my PhD from Harvard, um, President Reagan gave me an award I could use for anything I wanted to do. Think of that through the National Science Foundation, so I thought, well, why don't I do something that could not be funded through traditional means? So I got out a map with Barbara, who's seated next to me there. We found the largest rainforest in the South Pacific Islands with the least development, took our children, just our suitcases, uh, with their, their school books for one year. We lived in this little hut, this is our home, for a year without running water or electricity. We had so much fun. When we first got there, Barbara and I were walking on that sandy, white sandy beach. I said, Barbara, wouldn't you like to just live your life here? She said, one year, Paul, 12 months. <laughs> but when we got ready to leave, when we got ready to leave, she said, oh, do we have to go back, Paul? This is heaven. And the reason it was heaven is that these people don't have a lot of money, but they have a lot of relationships. And I just want to say something about you today, because yesterday was Earth Day, of course. Hooray. Hooray for the Earth. We have a lot of relationships, and this is a company about relationships. I'm just so happy to be with you. There's so many good friends here. I mean, I never thought I'd be able to make friends with amazing business people like you. I'm just a scientist, you know. I'm sort of the geek guy you see in the back of the uh, movie screen, you know. Um, but anyway. The relationships were great. Here's our children. This is Emily. She is now a professor at the University of Washington in business. This young man here, uh, Paul Matthew, now works for a bank. I don't want to tell you the name. <coughs> Morgan Stanley. And um, all these kids come up and say, Dad, you know, we love you, but we don't want to be botanists. We want to be business people. I'm like, uh, you know, <laughs> hooray. Mary here is uh, a lecturer at Oxford, and uh, little Hillary here is a house uh, wife and, and uh, mo amazing mother for some of our grandchildren. So that's the little family. But what was great, I got to tell you, we lived with this healer, Pela, and every morning, the little grandchildren from Pela, Pela was in her 90s, they'd come over, before they go to school, they'd stand there very politely. And Pela would rub this oil on their face and on their hands, on their skin. And, you know, I was really trying to find the cure for cancer. You know, I was really pumping Pela all the time for information. But she'd say, oh, sorry, I have to work on the oil. Sorry, I'd have to work on the oil. She's always out collecting the coconut to make the oil with. She's collecting the elang elang to put in there. She's collecting the jasmine at nighttime. And it was like she was expressing her love to these people. And so that's why Thursday was such a great day for me. And my hat's off to uh, Jared Warburton, and the entire team here, pushing these signature oils through. Because what Pela was putting on her children is pretty close to what we put in this bottle called Navi Navi. So more about that in a moment.
But anyway, this is EPIC, which is based on ethnobotany. People say, how is our stuff different from everybody else's? I said, well, we don't put bananas in our hair. You can go to a little shop down the street that sells body products and get banana hair balm. The healers tell me that if you put bananas in your hair, monkeys will bite your head. And <laughs> in fact, I've done extensive research on this. There's not a single, not one single indigenous culture I can find anywhere in the world where people wake up in the morning and put bananas in their hair, okay? So we use plants, but we use plants in Epic based on hundreds and sometimes thousands of years of knowledge of indigenous people. It's based on the knowledge that they use. And I've had this great privilege to be spending, I bet I've spent 30% of my life living in little villages around the world. I work particularly in the South Pacific and Southeast Asia islands. I was trained in Central America. I've worked in the Amazon, worked all over. And this is where we get the epic products from. So here's one that's really fun. Has anybody tried this one, Baobab Body Butter? Now look, just because you're here and, and just because it's such, I'm just so happy to be with you. I really can't think of anywhere I'd rather be right now than with you. It's just great to be with you. Um, does anybody have a jar of, of Baobab Body Butter? Oh, this is not a plant. No, no, come on up. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I will give this, well, actually, I won't give it. Thank you. <laughs> when you get your Baobab, we have so much fun making these products. You have no idea. I mean, we have a lot of fun here, you know? I mean, and look at the toys we have up in that laboratory. Wow, you know, it's pretty cool. So we do little fun, crazy things. You wanna hear a little secret about Baobab, okay? You know, the company, I was so impressed with what Nuskin's been doing for Malawi. I mean, how audacious, you know, a beauty company changing the trajectory of an entire African nation, you know? I, I really love this. and. Uh, Man, if I were you, I'd get yourself down to Malawi, see what's going down there. It's, it's really amazing. This Matala Manji school where they're teaching people how to do agriculture, the orphans work, they feed, nourish the children. So I said, could I make a product that was based solely on plants bought from Africa? My vision was African villagers collecting these plants, and I'd make a product. They said, well, give it a try. So this is it, Baobab body butter. It has the baobab pulp in there. It has a lot of shea butter. It has a little plant, Centella asiatica, the Africans use to uh, heal wounds. And the baobab tree, the, the pulp from the fruit, the women, just like I saw in Samoa, the women rub this on their children in the morning. I mean, it's really cool. And then I said to the company, and would it be possible if, that we could set it up so every time a jar is sold, a tree is planted? And, you know, I'm just a botanist, so you know, one jar, one tree. They said, sure, yeah, isn't that great? So every time a jar of this stuff's sold, one tree is planted <laughs> in Africa. I mean, we got a forest growing down there, fruit trees, forest trees. It's really cool. And uh, so in this, if you look at the bottle, in the, there's a baobab tree there. Probably can't see that. Um, well, anyway, take my word for it. You buy the jar. How about that? And plant a tree. There's a little heart in there, which is our little secret we made because it comes from the heart of Africa, and we're giving back to the Africans, and it's our way of secretly saying as product designers, we are so grateful to work with New Skin, a company that has a heart. So here, can you want to take this back now? There we go, thank you. So all of the Epic products are based on ethnobotany, and this really is true and these products, which are really fun, I can hardly keep them around my laboratory for my scientists, can't keep them at home for my daughter, uh, daughter and wife, because they just want to use all of them. Ice Dancer, Firewalker, Soul Solution. Anybody tried this? Now here's one thing I want to say to you, because I saw Scott Swart earlier in the audience. I don't know where Scott is, but he was here. He's such a good looking guy, you know? But I really think Scott is violating what it says, because it says on Soul Solution, rub on foot because it makes your foot look pretty. I think Scott's rubbing it on his head. Or maybe that's the new age lock me. That's probably the answer. But what's interesting about Ice Dancer, and this gets us into essential oils very quickly, is the fragrance 
in Ice Dancer is all from this mint that Native Americans rub on their legs and then they run, you know, 50 kilometers, 100 kilometers. You are smelling the power of that, that pure plant fragrance, which comes from this wild mint, you know. Um, and, and they rub it on their legs, and I think it is not just the power of the plants in Ice Dancer, but the fragrance really invigorates me. We use it for skiing. We ski a lot in our family. After a day of skiing, you know, rub that on your legs and you feel great. You would be amazed at how many gold medalists in the Winter Olympics are wearing this stuff. They just don't happen to endorse our company, but they, it's their secret weapon, you know, particularly for women's freestyle, and I've said enough there. The other fragrance thing I want to talk about is Ava Puhimoni. Everybody say that, please. <laughs> oh, I love that. And the reason I want you to learn how to say it is if you ever find yourself in Tahiti or in Tonga or in Hawaii or in Samoa, you say those words and you're going to be taken to this plant. And it's so fun. You squeeze the bulbs and you get this sweet fragrance coming out from Ava Puhimoni. Say it. That's cool. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I like this. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, in fact, I, I used that this morning in my hair. And every time I use it, when I smell the fragrance, which is natural, this is all natural fragrance, I'm taken back emotionally to the waterfall where the women show you how to squeeze the bulbs and put it in your hair and then you jump in. And no matter where I am, whether I'm in Stuttgart or uh, Marbella, France, or Twila, Utah, I put that stuff in there, whoosh, I'm just sort of emotionally transported back. So we've been using fragrance in some interesting ways because the Polynesians taught me that fragrance triggers emotion. Fragrance triggers emotion. And here's our Avapui Moni product. Say it one more time. Avapui Moni. Yeah, I like that. Thanks, Avapui Moni. So this is a company that understands the power of plants. We don't have people put bananas in their hair, folks, you know because we've got thousands of years of experience from indigenous people, knowledge from around the world. We've got this incredible innovation center. This is the most science-driven company I know. The scientists are, I mean, Joe Chang is so smart. I'm amazed he has any hair on his head. You know, his brain's so big, he's probably pushed all the hair out, you know? I mean, he, you know, everybody around here, is, the scientists are top-notch, and I really enjoy working with them. Somebody says, what's the difference in Newskin? Say, well, we got more scientists than, uh, you know, you got jars of goop, and it's true. Newskin understands the power of plants. This is from Provence, where I've been studying lavender. And so we've distilled some of this knowledge in these essential oils, Newskin essential oils. Anybody tried any of these? Okay, good. This has been a really fun project for me because what people say, what's the difference? The answer is, we're basing these on ethnobotany. Because when I was first in the islands, the people told me that fragrance triggers emotion. Now, we've got to figure out some way to have a loudspeaker to blast fragrance out. Sort of imagine what emotions these images make you feel. Boom. Oh, spice islands. This place is where... Uh, uh, Magellan came down to find the spices. I've been there. It's a hard place to get to. You got to fly in Jakarta, then Sulawesi, catch a boat to Ambon, then get a boat down to Bandit. This place is neat. And when you come into this place, it smells like cloves. And here's the family transportation. People are eating cloves and nutmeg and everything they do, they collect it. I mean, as you approach the island, you smell these cloves. So I've been down there studying with the people. Here's the fort that the Dutch set up in the 1700s to try to protect their trade monopoly, you know. That sort of looks like an early prototype of uh, age lock me, if you think about it. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those are like that. Yeah, there's our legal staff, those cannons. Cloves, they're so cool. What you don't, a lot of people don't know is that they're used medicinally by the local people, you know. In the old days, I'm old enough to remember this, that people would use it for toothache. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it does other things too. So we've taken the knowledge from ethnobotany, combined it with 6S scientific system. That's a powerful marriage to produce the essential oils. 
and this was what was so fun for me Thursday and to be with you today is to launch these new signature oils. And what a sweet thing the company did because they said, Paul, why don't you come see what you can come up with? So I went back to my notebooks based over 30 years. 30, imagine, I started working when I was two years old. 30 years of ethnobotanical studies. Count these signature oils. Let me tell you a little bit about them. Hopefully you've seen some of them. <clears throat> this one is called Nave Nave. And here's something I want you to remember. That painting right here by Paul Gauguin from Tahiti, look what he calls it. Nave Nave Mahana. Nave Nave means delicious or desirable. And there's a little story I want to tell you about Nave Nave. And it has to do with this plant in there. This is Elang Elang. This is what Pela Lilo puts in her little oil. It's what the Tahitians showed me they use. This releases its fragrance only at nighttime. It's on these big trees, they have these big branches. And the people go out with their woven coconut baskets. They have these long poles. They pull down the flowers in the dark. The best time to collect the ylang ylang is right about three or four in the morning because that's when it has maximum power. And then they put it in coconut oil, okay? And then they add a few more things, and here's what we've done here. In this blend, I had so much fun with this. I worked months on this. Came up, we have ylang ylang, turmeric, which all of our friends from Southeast Asia know is the real secret of skin. Jasmine, which is this beautiful floral high note. Again, a plant that, that smells at nighttime, and that's why it's so fun to be in the islands, walk along the beach at nighttime and smell that wafting of jasmine. Bergamot is sort of a base note, and fractionated coconut oil. And these plants are claimed by the Polynesians to increase feelings of attraction, romance, and commitment. In fact, in Sumatra, they put the petals on the mat in the hut where the, a newlywed couple is going to spend their wedding night. Isn't that sweet? So you want to hear a little secret? I made this for our anniversary and gave the first bottle to Barbara. Isn't that fun? Fra yeah, so love in a bottle. <laughs> And we had so much fun with some of our great leaders here. We were experimenting with it, and I had a little video, but I think our legal staff wouldn't like that, where they smell it and start kissing everybody. It was just really, this was so fun. Um, but try this stuff. I really, Nave Nave. Everybody say that, Nave Nave. Yeah, and then look up the Gauguin painting, so you can show this to people when you talk about it. Nave Nave. Next one is a Connie from based on my ethnobotanical work in the Colorado Plateau right here in Utah and Colorado and Arizona with Native Americans that live in the desert. They have a very dry, wind-blown, sandy uh, environment. And uh, it, it turns out I'm one of the world's experts on Anasazi ethnobotany. That's because it's a dead culture. It's a great gig because nobody can walk in and say you're wrong because there's no But a lot of this comes from Navajos, and the word Akani it means, everybody say Akani. Akani. Now look, I hope you forgive me for calling these things by the native names, okay? But, because I know you've got to learn something, but it sort of resonates with me, okay? This is the name, and it means earth oil or candle. What we have in it is pretty exciting. Oops, let me go backwards. Can I go back? Yep, there we go. We have a hoba. Evening primrose, again, pumps out its fragrance at nighttime. You think the desert's dead and then these little flowers open up? The sphinx moss will, will fly maybe a kilometer or two to find these little flowers. Beautiful fragrance. Rose oil that the Navajos put in their moccasins and to, when they have to go walking or hunting. Moline, this is really fun. This is sort of a plant that looks like big flannel type leaves and the Native Americans use it for uh, diaper rash for their babies. Nuskin uses it for our shaving cream. 
we don't make any claims for our products. You know that. We don't make any claims at all. But this plant, the Native Americans claim, can heal small cuts and abrasions. And we have juniper in there. And Akani was designed by moi <laughs> to be a sort of a, a healing, a calming influence on skin that's troubled or has eruption or, or it's just a, 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 to impart a sense of well-being and healing, okay? Akani. And the last one, and I know I've, I've got to yield some time here and, and get off pretty quick. This one's really fun called Kasbah. Now, there's this great, great line, and I think it's in a Humphrey Bogart film. One of you are going to find this for me. It's in this movie, and it's like the ultimate pickup line, come with me to the Casbah. You've heard this, haven't you? <laughs> well, I've been working the last six years in Oman and in Dubai and in Qatar and in Northern Africa doing ethnobotany. <clears throat> I've been treated so kindly by the villagers there, and I've been studying their ethnobotany, and what's so fantastic <clears throat> is that Kasbah, of course, means fortress. You go to Morocco, go to Marrakesh, there's a Kasbah there, which is the inner walled part of the city. It's a fortress. So think of Kasbah as the wall, the fortress that you put up. And this is fun because we have grapeseed oil, uh, sweet almond oil, again, all from North Africa, turmeric, few things you might recognize here, citronella and lemongrass. It was interesting because a lot of our uh, Vietnamese distributors are saying, I've smelled that before. And I said, yes, your mother probably made you soup out of lemongrass. You're smelling that lemongrass scent. Jasmine and myrrh. And we have to be very careful what claims we say about Casbah. Uh, the best thing is just to stick to the words that New Skin's approved. These are used plants that are used to protect skin during outdoor activities. Casbah, <laughs> a fortress. <laughs> Am I okay, Greg? I mean, there's, there's lawyers here ready to grab Paul right off the stage, but okay. I said exactly the words. Okay, thank you, thank you. I have to be careful here. Plants used, everybody say, read this with me. Plants used to protect skin during act or activities. <laughs> anyway, this is Epic Essential Oils. And like everything else in Epic, when you sell an Epic product, 25 cents goes back to the force for good. The whole bunch of the money, all of it, New Skin covers all the administration, there's, so there's no salaries, no hokum. 100% goes back. There's so many cool projects. Look up New Skin Force for Good. This one I've just got to tell you about. We built a bridge in Madagascar, a really remote part. People carried concrete bags on their back for three days to get to the villagers to help us. The reason was we built a school with Force for Good funds, and then we found out then in the rainy season, the children had to swim a river to get to school. So he said, well, could we build you a bridge? And the people said, <clears throat> what's that? He said, well, we'll show you. So we built this bridge. And when the bridge was cut, the adults in the village started crawling across it because they'd never seen a bridge before. And we said, no, no, you can walk right across. It's safe, you know. So every day uh, in the morning, these children from Madagascar walk across this bridge built by you and the Force for Good, attend a school built by you and the Force for Good, and they have their lives approved by, the force, by you and the Force for Good. And I sort of love this as a metaphor because I've always seen Epic as a bridge. I've always wanted uh, Epic to be a way that you can welcome new people to our company as a bridge to help them understand what our company is about, then introduce them to some of the really cool, you know, space age technology that we've got. Um, it's a bridge that allows us to give back to indigenous people. And the one thing I want you to do, particularly those of you who are new here, people, you're going to go home and your mom or your sister or your cousin or your friend next door is going to say, now, what's this company you work for in Provo, Utah? What, what is it you do? Here is your answer. Oh. I wake up each morning and I feed hungry children. 
I plant forests in Africa. I build schools for people that have no schools whatsoever, and we ac I actually build a bridge in Madagascar to help little children. What do you do for a living? Okay. Okay. So, thank you. I'm going to be around here all day. I hope to get a chance to visit with all of you. You have a standing invitation to see me in Jackson Hole. You have a standing invitation to have half of my sandwich. You have standing invitation to see some of these products, but be careful who you share Nave Nave with because <laughs> it's like feeding a stray dog. Those people will follow you forever. Thanks so much for being with me. Lovely to be with you. Can we say wow together again for Paul? Wow! Isn't he a great asset that we have? He's a scientist, but did you feel the heart? Amazing. Okay, we want to hear from an Emerald executive from Canada. Tell us a little about her experience with Epic Essential Oils. Let me welcome to the stage Joy Castro Daniel. What, what's your experience been with the Epic Essential Oils? Hi, good morning everyone. Go Canada! <laughs> I love Epic Essential Oils. When they were first um, announced that they were launching them, I turned to my husband and I said, uh, I was a little nervous, what are oils anyway and what are they used for? And so as I got to use them, um, now we use them every day in our home. and. I love the oils because it's totally impacted my business um, for three reasons. One, hashtag, I'm a mom of three kids. <laughs> hashtag, uh, I'm not using hashtags properly. Hashtag, safe ingredients. Hashtag, non-toxic home. And so moms, young people, they're totally about these oils. Um, second reason is that they're super easy to share. I think I shared them with like 10 people this morning. Yeah, in the back <laughs> of the room, we had a little house party going back there. And it's just like any time anyone says that they have a stuffy nose, a sore head, sore muscles, whatever, I just say, you want to try something? Is it, it could be in the back of the grocery store lineup. It could be at parties. And I just take it out of my purse and I... And it takes two seconds. So super easy to share. And then the third reason is that the price point is awesome on these. They're like 30 bucks on average, and um, you can collect them. People like to collect them. People try one, and then they call you or text you and say, do you got any more? Do you got any more? And so I love Epic Essential Oils, and I wanted to ask Paul Cox, where are you? Can you ask Scott if I can have one set of your signature oils? <laughs> Where's Scott? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> So I'm so excited. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Joy. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. We're going to close out our session hearing a little bit about what's coming and some of those other products that maybe you had a chance to test out out there in our product expo. So let, please, let, please help me welcome to the stage Director of Marketing for the Americas Region, Jared Warburton. <laughs> 